Hello everyone, this is Sarah with the York County Library. Welcome. This is our first uh, tutorial video of the new year and today we are going to be creating a painting using cotton swabs. So this is what I created today and what you will see me create in the video and what we're going to need for this project are cotton swabs of course. I am going to also be using acrylic paints for my paint portion of this. I have a variety of colors. I am going to be using a canvas board. So this is one I got in a pack from Michaels. And I'm also going to be using some tape to secure my cotton swabs together. Um, some additional materials you might want and need, something that I use while I was painting are a pencil so that you're able to sketch out ideas of how you want your painting to be or to sketch directly onto the canvas. And also I use some mixed media paper so that I could just test out my different mark making and different um, combinations of Q-tips. So this way you have something you can practice on before putting it on the final canvas. But even if you have it on the canvas, remember you could paint over if you didn't like what you made and start again. So friends, that's all you need. Primarily paints, cotton swabs, tape, though you don't really need tape, you could use a rubber band, you could just hold the Q-tips together um, and something to paint on. So friends, without further ado, let's get into the video. Before I get started on the painting, I decided that I wanted to practice making marks with the cotton swab brush. So the first thing I did was I got a piece of the mixed media paper and I got a plate for my paint palette. I had a little trouble in the beginning trying to decide how many cotton swabs I wanted in my brush. I ended up going with around 15, but I did find it a little difficult to put them all together in a certain shape. It was difficult to get them into a circle, to have them sit next to each other, because their ends are wider than the middles, they tend to kind of spiral around each other. So get used to handling them. You may want more than this, you may want less than this. You may decide just to hold them in your hands and not use tape. So play around with it and see what happens. So I've got 15 in a bundle taped together and I'm just practicing making some marks on the paper using some yellow paint. And as you can see, the mark changes from the first mark to the other marks. So as the paint is used, it starts to look like individual marks. The first ones look like blobs, and then the next ones kind of have more individual dots within them. I made a smaller one with six, and played around with moving the cotton swabs around, and used some purple paint with that. So now I have a smaller mark, and I can shift the cotton swabs around and try to make a different shape. You can also see that I'm testing it out on the actual palette before I put it on the page. You could tap it on the palette to take off some excess paint. Now I'm going to put nine together, so something between the six and the 15. I'm going to put a piece of tape down and try a different method of rolling them up. So I'm just going to lay them side by side Pressing the middle stem of the cotton swab onto the tape, and then I am going to roll it. So if you have some trouble handling them or bundling them in your hand, you could use that option. So now I'm going to use some light pink in the corner and practice using it. So now I'm going to try to build a shape. 
by putting my marks together. I'm not really referencing any particular flower or object. I'm just creating a shape. First I put down the dark purple and then I'm going on top with a lighter color and then blending the two by going back over with some of the darker color. Use this time, use these materials to really experiment and see what you can do. So instead of doing a long shape, I decided to go for a circular shape. Putting kind of a middle to our flower there. And then I decided I wanted to take a single Q-tip and use it to paint a stem for our flower instead of using a paintbrush. You could also use a single Q-tip to make a single dot on the page, which you'll see later. So now that I've practiced, I am confident and I'm ready to get into the actual painting. So I'm gonna take my pencil and sketch out the general shapes for the flowers. First, I wanna decide where their stems are gonna be on the bottom page. I'm also gonna keep them kind of in the center. I start with the stems because the stems are gonna be the ones that'll probably overlap with each other, and I wanna make sure that my flowers are in a position on the page where those overlaps are where I want them to be. So I'm gonna do a circular flower, two circular flowers, one bigger than the other, and then I'm going to do two of the longer flowers I practiced creating. Also one bigger and one smaller. Once you put the pencil marks down, at this point you could go back in with your eraser and lighten the marks because you may be able to see them through the paint. I wasn't too concerned about it, so I decided to leave them. You could also experiment with putting color pencil down instead of using a pencil and see how that comes through paint. So I'm looking at my flowers and deciding if they overlap. I wanna put the one in the background first so that I can paint those on top of it. Or in this case, I am going to do, or I kind of changed my mind and I put a flower down that is in the background first, um, actually in the foreground first, and then do one in the background. So first I'm gonna focus on the large circular flower, making marks around the edge. Really didn't wanna make the line around the flower solid, so I did leave it wavy, and with small marks out to the side. I took some lighter yellow, just for some variation in color. Then for the center, I used the dark purple. I wanted it to be a little darker, so I added a little bit of black to my palette and mixed that in with the purple. And then once I had that down, I tried to blend it out a little bit by making marks from the center and going outwards. So now I'm gonna work on the larger, tall flower. Put some light pink down. Then I added some purple to my palette, a lavender purple. and then put that on top. Again, I wanted to make the edges wavy to make it look like there were petals, so I made sure that the edges were not smooth. Here I'm experimenting by taking a singular cotton swab and taking color onto it. 
I took some of the dark purple and really liked how that looked on top of the lighter colors. So I continued that from the bottom up. When I would press the cotton swab down, it almost created a ring. So it almost looked like the edges of petals. So it almost created a shadow effect when I used it. I really liked that. Now I'm working on the smaller, tall flower using that lavender color, creating those wavy and uneven edges to our flower. I put some pink on top so it's kind of the reverse of what I did with the other one. Then I put a little bit more light pink, went over to create that stippled effect or that dot effect we had with the other flower. One thing you might find with your cotton swabs is if they become too saturated with paint, they might unravel, so just pay attention to that and how it changes the marks. I put in a little bit of light yellow. And I wanted this one, this flower, to be lighter than the other one. So I left it a lighter color. Now the circular flower, I decided to use and just hold three q-tips in my fingers and dab the yellow down. You can see that I am placing it behind the other flower instead of painting on top. And because I'm just holding these, I can change the orientation or change how I hold them to change the mark that I make. Now I'm adding some light yellow that I make some light pink in to the edges of the smaller flower. And since it's kind of the same shape and the same color as the other one, I did want to add something different. So I took a cotton swab, dipped it into the dark purple, and started to create a pattern from the center where I just did a dot around and around to make it look like individual petals within that flower. I added a little bit to the, uh, the larger flower, but I still wanted them to be distinct. This way is just kind of like in nature, Two flowers may be the same, you may have two roses, but they each have their individual shape and character. So then I took a single q-tip and started creating the stems for our flowers. I was trying to decide which one went on top of the other, which one went behind the other. You could use different greens if you wanted to. But I just decided to use my mark making or the way that I layered the paint to show which ones were on top. For the flower in the bottom left, I did add a little bit of yellow so that it would pop because it was going over two stems. And just a little bit of final touches. I decided not to put leaves, but you could totally add them. Taking out some of the pencil marks that aren't covered by paints, and there we go our own unique flower painting using cotton swabs. Well friends, that is the end of the video. What did you think? Did you enjoy this? Did you enjoy using something that wasn't a paintbrush? Um, are you inspired to use other things to make marks? I hope so. I really enjoyed this. Um, I really enjoyed taking this single q-tip and going over and adding texture in certain areas and though I can see this pencil mark right here I kind of like it <laughs> if I had gone with like a colored pencil that might have been interesting too to see the paint on top of the colored pencil so I hope that you give making marks with cotton swabs a try it was something that I had never done before and just found really interesting Cotton swabs are something you might have around the house that you may not think to use. And maybe next time you use cotton swabs, maybe a cotton pad, 
maybe a cotton ball and see the different marks that you can make. So friends, that's all for our video today. I hope that you had a happy new year and I hope that you will join me next week. So remember friends to stay safe and stay creative York County.